in a dark and remote place called Ginunga Gap, where the extreme cold of Niflheim and the intense heat of Muspelheim met, they lived Emir, the first giant, a wild and chaotic being. Emir was sustained by the milk of Audumbla, a cosmic cow who by licking salt from the glaciers discovered the first god, Buri. Buri had a son, Bor, who, with his wife Vesla, had three sons, Odin, Vili, and Ve. These brothers grew up seeing how the giants led by Emir threatened to destroy everything. Decided to stop this threat, Odin and his brothers fought Emir in a great battle. Defeating him, they used Emir's body to create a new world. His flesh became the earth, his bones became mountains, his teeth became rocks, and his blood became rivers and oceans. They made the sky with his skull, where they placed stars, the sun, and the moon. This new world was beautiful and full of life, with fertile land, mountains, and a bright sky. Odin and his brothers walked through this place, admiring their handiwork. Although it was full of life, they realized it was missing something capable of caring for this world and appreciating its beauty, something that could think, feel, and create as they did. One day, Odin, Vili, and Ve, three mighty gods, were walking along the beach when they found two tree trunks that had washed ashore. They looked like simple pieces of wood, but they saw something more in them. The gods set to work. Using their powers, they carved into the logs the shape of a man and a woman, whom they named Ask and Embla. Odin, the wisest of the trio, gently touched the figures and brought them to life, causing them to breathe. Vili, known for his intelligence, gave them the ability to think and feel, making their eyes glow with life and understanding. Finally, they gave them human appearance and senses. Their wooden skin became flesh, and they acquired the ability to see, hear, smell, speak, taste, and feel the world around them. Thus, the first humans were born with the help of these three gods, Ask and Embla, endowed with the ability to love, learn, create, and destroy, were free to explore Midgard, the new world that Odin and his brothers had created. Odin, known for his wisdom and power, decided to build his palaces himself. After much effort, he achieved his goal. The first and most impressive is the Valaskjalf, famous for its silver roof and incredible design. The highlight is his throne, the Hlitskjalf, from which Odin can see everything that happens in the Nine Worlds, watching over gods, humans, and giants. Then there is Valhalla, the Hall of the Fallen. Here, the Valkyries take warriors who died in battle to enjoy an endless banquet with the King of the Gods. Valhalla is decorated with shields and spear beams, recalling the bravery and honor of those who live there. In this place, Odin is seen as a king, a commander, and a leader of warriors. Finally, there is Gladsheim, the meeting hall of the gods. Here, Odin conducts debates and makes critical decisions. This place represents balance and order. Each palace reflects a different aspect of Odin. In Valaskjalf, he is the observer. In Valhalla, the leader of the warriors. And in Gladsheim, the just ruler. These palaces show his greatness, wisdom, and control over the universe. In addition, the dwarves, powerful magical beings, gave Odin his divine spear, Gungnir. Long after, in the heights of Asgard, where the gods live, Odin was the leader. He was very wise and strong, but still, he could not know or see everything. By his side, he had two black ravens, Hugin and Munin, who helped him a lot. Hugin, meaning thought, flew everywhere, seeking to know more. Munin, meaning memory, remembered all the stories and secrets. Every day, Odin sent his ravens to fly through the Nine Realms. They passed through high mountains, deep valleys, rough seas, and shadowy forests. They saw giants and gods, humans and magical beings, watching what they did and listening to what they said. When night fell again, the ravens would return to Asgard, perching on Odin's shoulders and telling him all they had seen and heard. In this way, they became his eyes and ears, helping him to keep learning. 
Odin also had the company of two wolves, Jerry and Freki, who were very loyal. Jerry, the greedy one, was always looking for something more, while Freki, the greedy one, lived life intensely. At the feast in Asgard, while the gods and warriors brought food to Odin as a token of respect, he ate nothing. He only drank wine, which kept him alert. The food was given to Jerry and Freki, who enjoyed it and always wanted more. Even if Odin did not eat, he was always surrounded by his companions, listening to their sounds as they shared moments. The wolves were always loyal and protective of their god, accompanying him on his adventures. In return, he gave them food and care. Odin, the god, wanted to know more than anything else. He always sought to learn and understand more to rule his kingdom better. In his quest to know more, he came to an extraordinary place, a fountain guarded by a giant named Mimer. This fountain held all the world's secrets, but getting them was difficult. A great sacrifice had to be made. Odin, without fear, offered Mimir something huge, one of his eyes. This was to show how much he desired knowledge. Mimir, impressed by his bravery, accepted the sacrifice. Thus, Odin put his eye in the fountain and could drink from it, filling himself with wisdom and power. Although he lost an eye, his understanding of the world grew enormously. Now, with more knowledge, Odin sought even more wisdom. He wanted to learn about runes, magical symbols with great power. For this, he was willing to make another great sacrifice. He went to the Tree of Life, Yggdrasil, and hung himself from a branch, wounded by his spear. This act was his way of seeking that deep and ancient knowledge he wanted. For nine days, a brave god endured immense pain alone, hanging between heaven and earth without help, food, or water. Despite intense suffering, both physical and soulful, he remained steadfast, determined to attain profound, dark knowledge. Finally, on the verge of collapse, the runes appeared before him, emanating from deep within a sacred tree, revealing secrets and power. He captured them, understanding their essence, and though exhausted, became the possessor of ancient and unique wisdom, rising as the most powerful and wise deity, the master of the runes. The traveler of the nine worlds, ever in awe of the nature and beauty of Midgard, the realm of humans, found a special connection with Yurd, the embodiment of the earth itself. Her wild and ever-changing beauty was an incomparable source of life and energy. They conversed about the mysteries of the universe and nature, finding a deep and shared love. From their union was Thor, a new god who combined the strength of the earth and the power of the sky, loved and respected in the nine worlds. This is how the wise father of all found love in Mother Earth. After a time, Odin fell in love with Frigg, the queen of Asgard. Frigg understood Odin as no one else could. They shared dreams, fears, and an insatiable curiosity. She, wise and courageous, also had the gift of foreseeing the future, but chose to keep her vision secret. Their union brought Baldur into the world, a being of goodness and light. This love united them and strengthened their leadership over the gods, guiding them with respect and unity in the face of adversity, even in the face of the grim prophecy about Baldur. Odin, always eager for knowledge, discovered the existence of a magical elixir that granted the art of speech and poetry. Gunlod hid this elixir in a distant land of giants. To obtain it, Odin used his cunning instead of strength, transforming himself into a charismatic traveler. His charm and cunning won over everyone, especially Gunlod, who, captivated by his words and affection, granted him access to the precious elixir on their last day together. With the elixir in his possession, Odin transformed himself into an eagle to flee and bring the gift of the word to Asgard. Despite the betrayal, he was unrepentant, convinced that this gift would benefit many beyond the confines of Jotunheim. Thus, gods and mortals received the gift of expression with beauty and emotion, a lasting legacy from Odin beyond any resentment he may have left in his wake. Long ago, a formidable creature, Fenrir, the giant wolf son of Loki and Angerboda, 
was increasing, becoming ever more fierce and powerful. The gods, aware of a prophecy that foretold that Fenrir would finish off Odin during Ragnarok, felt their tranquility threatened by this beast. Despite the fear he caused them, the wise Odin and the other gods sought a way to stop him, knowing they had to limit his strength to protect their world. At first, they tried to restrain Fenrir using forged chains, but the wolf broke them effortlessly. After these failures, they turned to the dwarves, master artisans, to create a magical binding, Gleipnir, composed of impossible and extreme elements. This new attempt seemed harmless, but its strength exceeded all expectations. When Gleipnir was presented to Fenrir, he distrusted the gods because of previous attempts to bind him. However, he agreed to be bound as part of a challenge, demanding the hand of a god in his mouth as a token of trust. Tyr, the god of war, accepted, sacrificing his hand. Although Fenrir tried to free himself, Gleipnir proved indestructible, immobilizing him. Although this partially reassured Odin, the shadow of a dark prediction about Baldur, his son, began to worry the gods again. Baldur's mother, Frigg, sought to protect her son by asking every element in the universe not to harm him. All agreed, except the mistletoe, seen by Frigg as harmless because of its youth. This led to a false sense of security, allowing the gods to throw objects at Baldur, amazed at his invulnerability playfully. Meanwhile, the cunning Loki found Baldur's only weak spot in the mistletoe and plotted his downfall. Loki tricked Hodor, Baldur's blind brother, into throwing a spear of mistletoe at Baldur, telling him it was only a game. Tragedy struck when Baldur was struck by the spear and died, plunging the gods into mourning and marking an ominous warning of future events, including Ragnarok, the world's end. This set in motion a chain of events centered on revenge and punishment for Loki, the one responsible for the deception. After Baldur's death, Odin, filled with sadness and enraged, sought revenge. Knowing that only a son born after this tragedy could accomplish such a task, he joined forces with Rinder, a giantess of remarkable beauty and strength. Despite the complex emotions and manipulation involved, their union resulted in the birth of Valley, who increased and fulfilled his destiny by avenging Baldur. Odin, the wise ruler of Asgard was fully aware of the approaching Ragnarok, a prophesied cataclysm in which giants of ice and fire threatened to destroy everything. Despite the imminent danger, he was calm and ready, focusing on preparing Valhalla. This place, his splendid hall, was filled with the bravest warriors, those fallen in battle and chosen by the Valkyries to join in the final defense. Meanwhile, Odin did not lose details of what was happening in Midgard, the world of humans, thanks to his ravens, Hugin and Munin, and every night, the Valkyries continued their task of gathering the best fighters. These warriors, housed in Valhalla, dedicated themselves to training and enjoying an eternal feast, awaiting the moment to face Ragnarok under the guidance of Odin, who trusted in the strength and courage of his allies to face the dark threat that loomed over them. Finally, the time of Ragnarok came, marking the beginning of the final battle with the darkening of the skies and earthquakes provoked by the forces of chaos. Monstrous creatures led by the wolf Fenrir attacked while the sun and the moon were devoured, plunging the world into total darkness. Faced with this desolate scene, Odin and his warriors bravely faced a fate foretold since ancient times, fighting with all their power and courage. Odin, the one-eyed god, sacrificed his vision in search of wisdom. From his position, he watched the events predicted since ancient times unfold. At his side, the ravens Hugin and Munin, representatives of thought and memory, remained faithful, foreshadowing the imminent destruction that was to come. The sound of Heimdall's horn, guardian of the gods, marked the beginning of a fight feared by all. At the same time in Valhalla, the Hall of Warriors, the air was filled with anticipation and bravery. The fallen warriors, chosen for their courage, along with the Valkyries, prepare to face their last challenge under a stormy sky. The final battle, known as Ragnarok, 
shook existence with ferocity. With Odin at their head riding Sleipnir, his exceptional steed, the gods faced the giants in an all-out fight. The confrontation between Odin and Fenrir, the giant wolf, became the center of this catastrophic conflict. Despite Odin's courage and ancient skill, the prophecy was fulfilled when Fenrir surpassed him, marking a turning point in the battle. However, the fall of Odin did not mean the end, but rather the beginning of a silent revenge on the part of his son Vidar, promising to continue the fight. Odin, revered as the supreme god, left a legacy of war, wisdom, and poetry, maintaining his position as leader even after his departure.